Hey everybody, uh, this is Henson. I'm from Feedback Quiz. And today I got David uh, Nicolucci from wearegrowthhack.com on with us. And we want to talk a little bit about this uh, BuzzFeed article that came out last week uh, mentioning some of the uh, black hat um, tactics that some of these sellers are doing and you know some of these uh, data leaks that are coming in from China. And uh, it seems like a lot of sellers are a little bit angry about this information, although um, you know most of the bigger sellers and uh, yeah. other people in this industry kind of already knew that this, this has been going on for quite a long time. But it's the first time where we've actually gotten some you know major news about this. So um, yeah, David, um, if you could give us a quick introduction and uh, maybe how you started on Amazon and. How did you how did you get in contact with uh, Leticia and BuzzFeed to get on this article? Hey, hey, um, how are you doing? So, um, well, uh, it's, uh, it's my pleasure to be here. The first time I am with, with you guys, Feedback Wits. Um, so how did I start? I, I have been working in digital marketing for, for a while. Um, I'm, I'm from Italy. I'm European. And I, I've actually been working between, you know, Germany, uh, Spain, uh, Italy. And uh, one day I got this nice job offer from some ballet tech. Uh, they are the owner of Tautronics and Rough Power on Amazon. They are a big seller. I think one of the top five at that moment was 2014. Uh, so I moved to Shenzhen. Uh, I got my visa, I got my job, and I started working with them. And I discovered a new entire world. That is the uh, Amazon, Amazon world. Uh, that's how I started to learn about uh, Amazon marketing, you know, the, the ranking and all the things you have to do to, to get there on the first page. Um, and uh, after, you know, after a few weeks, I already started to make my own career in uh, internally at Sun Valley. And I, I was, after a few months, the team leader for, for, their, for, for them, uh, um, for the marketing team of the, of the actual foreigners who were working for, for Sun Valley. And then I got another job with another company. So, what happened here is that I spent two years in China working with two different sellers and uh, I already started learning what was going on there. Then um, I, after the second year, I moved to Hong Kong. I made my own consulting agency for Amazon sellers, uh, trying not to focus only on Chinese sellers. So I'm, I'm actually mostly providing my service to Westerns, so European, Americans. And uh, I started just getting you know, getting in touch with the community around, uh, you probably you guys know because you are being following, you know, different podcasts and listening to, uh, different, different stories or watching different videos and reading articles that there is a big community of sellers here and they all share with each other, uh, both white hat and black hat, um, to know different people, uh, Probably all of them are mentioned in the article by Leticia, and uh, I also started to to write in my art in uh, in my blog uh, what is going on in this part of the world. Uh, I remember that it all started um, when uh, one of my clients or one of my partners um, they actually contacted me on LinkedIn and uh, they asked me to come over in their office in Berlin. Uh, to have a quick chat about you know about the Amazon business, I thought they just wanted to have you know a consultation. Uh, they told me that the meeting would be for for one hour or and a half hour. So I went to Berlin and I flew I flew to their office. Uh, at the moment I was in Italy. I was having my my Christmas holiday, so it wasn't a big deal. And uh, we were supposed to have this meeting for one hour. We ended up in the meeting room with the CEO and you know old board directors of the company for four hours, four hours just talking about Chinese sellers and why they're so good at Amazon. This happening gave me the idea of writing my first article about the Chinese sellers. So I realized that I had a lot of valuable information uh, with my, you know, two and a half, uh, at that time it was three years of experience already with, uh, with Amazon sellers. Uh, I started my agency also working with the OK. They are still one of the main sellers uh, on Amazon.com and they are from China. They're also based near Shenzhen. 
So I got a lot of valuable information and I, I said to myself, okay, it's, it's time for me to actually open this box to the world and start, start writing about it. So I wrote my, first, my very first article that is The Secrets Behind the Success of Chinese Amazon Sellers. And uh, it's a very long article. I expose 12 different uh, causes, uh, reasons why Chinese are so good at doing what they're doing. And between some of those reasons, there is also some black hat. I mean, it's not only black hat and it's not only Chinese people, but there is, of course, some black hat. This was last year uh, in April. I published this, uh, this article. And that's when I started to get my first exposure as the guy who's talking about Chinese sellers. Um, what happened is that I remember that after a very short while, the, the Wall Street Journal published something uh, regarding Chinese sellers. Uh, because, you know, people were starting to talk about it and uh, this, this became a hot topic. And, um, and also the black hat started to, to be more and more visible. I mean, every average seller would get a hijacker or something else happening to, to his listing. So, you know, somebody with the cent when vendor central will abuse of his, of his listings or false claims, a lot of things. And I remember this is also the time when uh, lawyer firms and, you know, uh, this kind of agencies would actually flourish because there is a lot of work for them to do. You know, they have to deal with this kind of stuff. It's, it is not just black hat. It's also, you know, uh, like very practically illegal stuff, like false claims, etc., like trademark violations, et cetera, IP violations. Uh, so what happens is that the Wall Street Journal talks about it. More, more journals talk about it. Amazon changes the rules. So they, after a while, they became more strict again with the reviews and with the controls. So for sellers actually got easier to get suspended for, for the bad ones and sometimes even for the, for the good ones. So, you know, this is creating an entire, how do you say, I would say it's a, it's a feedback <laughs> that, that, that never stops. It's, it's like a loop. Uh, so the more seller, the more sellers doing bad stuff are there, the more Amazon would increase the controls and the, the harder it is becoming for the, for the little seller to actually launch a product. And, um, and if any one of you, you know, ever had, you know, a hijacker or something weird happening to his listings or to his account, this is completely normal. I was in a call yesterday with, with, with a new client that I just acquired and, uh, he was telling me this, I, I started selling uh, for the first three months, everything was good, was perfect. And then everything dropped. And then, you know, I had this hijacker in this listing and, and then it's, it, you know, he's in panic and it's, it's normal. I understand it. And he asked me, is it the Chinese? Is it Amazon? What is it? Because, because I, I don't really understand what's going on. And I told him, well, first you had your honeymoon period and you should know what that is. And, and now it's completely normal that your sales are going down. If you do the same thing that you've been doing when you started, and then hijackers, they come and go, you know, there is some ways to protect your brand, some ways to prevent that they attack you and, and so on and so forth. So I try to comfort him and, you know, of course, using the help of somebody who knows about it is the, one of the best ways that you can protect yourself. If you don't know what's going on, you should definitely, as a new seller, try to get as, as much information as you can. Uh, try to, you know, talk with people, go to conferences, listen to podcasts, uh, listen, uh, you know, see webinars, read articles and be, have information. Uh, for example, Kevin King, my friend, I guess uh, many of you know him. Uh, he was speaking at the Global Sources Summit in Hong Kong and uh, he was saying this and I completely agree with him. We, we, know, we, we know the same people who do Black Hat and he was saying, I never done black hat. I never done. I never had an hijacker in my listings. But I want to know what is going on because I want to know what I'm against. Uh, you know what I'm what I'm up against, and uh, this is completely true. I I think that we should all know what's going on, and that's why I think it's good for you know for Letitia or for whoever, even for the Wall Street Journal to to interview the guys who are doing black hat or the guys like me who know guys who do black hat because I never done black hat. I'm, I'm never suggesting anybody to do black hat, but I, I do know people who do black hat to attack and to protect. I actually know more people who do black hat to protect than to attack uh, because those who actively do 
bad stuff, they wouldn't really expose themselves. Many of them, they have like removed me from from Facebook or from WeChat, from from whatever. It's it's really funny. Uh, it, it's a war, and um, this is actually when I. Uh, then published my second article where I expose all the black hat that is going on right now. I, I published this one in October last year or, um, and, I, and I put down a list of black hat strategies and what's going on and also s very actionable advices on how to protect yourself. Maybe we can talk about this uh, later. So yeah. Let so yeah, David, that's some really good information. I, I think, um, I guess the main question we have is that <laughs> You mentioned like a lot of this stuff has been going on for quite a while, like more than you know, years, right? And we haven't gotten any real public attention until recently. Um, have you seen any changes that Amazon has done to help prevent some of these black hats from happening? I know hijackers is something you can't really prevent. I know you know you can. They have brand um, brand registry now that can help you know prevent it a little bit, but it's not hundred percent, right? Um, and still, it seems like uh, there's still a lot of black hat going on right now. So what would you say like is the top um, issues right now or top black hat tactics that are still going on that, you know, that's really annoying sellers and how to, <laughs> what's, what's your suggestion on, you know, going around that? So what, what is going on still, uh, you know, before the black hat was, any seller could do that. Um, I remember, I'm not going to make any names here. And, uh, uh, but yeah, no I can name, tell, no brand. Yeah, not, yeah, no, yeah. We're not calling anything out. We're just talking. <laughs> yeah, we're just talking. Um, I remember that at the beginning, when I came to China, some sellers, they would have their, you know, the entire department for that person, that particular person involved in doing only black hat or at one, you know, the, the main part of his job was to try to figure out you know, some algorithm stuff and then they would actually share the information with each other. What I see here, what I've seen in China is that this big community, they really fight for doing this. And uh, you know, in the West, we don't have the sculpture that we really have to break the rules that much. So we wouldn't really bother. I mean, we are starting to get introduced to Black Hat just and I mean we as Americans, Europeans, just because we are, you know, um, reacting to this and it's not coming from, from the most of us. So what is still going on, I know before it was all about manipulating reviews, uh, it wasn't that much about keyword ranking like fast. Also because in 2014 when I started, there wasn't that huge competition as it is right now. It was still a little bit manageable. Seriously, but now there are just too many sellers, and and yeah, forty one percent of them are coming from China, and of the Chinese sellers, forty percent are based in Shenzhen. So you can guess what's going on there. So they all share information with each other, etc. Now Black Hat is becoming more expensive, so it's in the hand in the hand of a few people. It's about one hundred or less than that. But the thing is that they are spreading this information all over and they are selling this information to both Chinese and Americans. They they really don't care. I mean it's like money. What, what kind of uh, what kind of information are you um, pertaining to like that they're selling? Is it like data for um, you know Yeah, I mean yeah. you know those those things from uh, A9, it's always been going on, or at least for uh, for one year. Then ways of getting reviews, uh, ways of ranking with uh, with the keywords very quickly, uh, that without triggering the Amazon algorithm. That's the thing. They know how the algorithm works, so they know exactly how many reviews you need in which time, because. Everybody here knows that one of the factors is sales velocity and the reviews velocity, the, you know, everything. So for example, if you're running a deal and you want to do it in a black hat way, you know that you have to stay within a limit. There is that limit that doesn't allow Amazon to actually find out that you're doing something. So as long as there is a rule, there will always be somebody who knows it or to, who finds it out or who drives somebody to, to get this rule. And right. you know, so there, there will always be. Now, I have said this to, to somebody, I believe that, I mean, it's just, this is just my idea. You know that Amazon is pulling out from China, right? They are shutting down their .cn uh, website. It's gonna happen in July. It was in the news like a few weeks ago. Right. I, I, think, I think this might be related. 
because I mean, we, we know already that for, uh, for Amazon, it's kind of impossible to, you know, to compete with Timo, Taobao, because China is a completely different market. But I would say that as their market is not that huge right now, if they're pulling out, it's also because maybe they don't want to have this leak of information that is going on right now. So this might be one reason. Uh, and actually, this would actually, if this happens to have less information on the China side, this would actually help Amazon to have less black hat because there is less people who have access to this information and it would become more and more and more expensive. Um, now, um, I guess be, before you go on, I, I always wondered why this kind of sensitive information would be known by account managers in China, right? Because why would they need to know exactly how many sales you need to have in a certain time period for a certain category or how many you know, reviews you need to get? Because it just seems like if they're just managing accounts, then they should just be helping people sell on Amazon. But why do they have access to this information? So I'm not really convinced that if we stop the Chinese uh, market side, it's this, this will end, right? There's always someone that knows this data, right? But I guess, it's more for Amazon to control who has the access to it, right? And it just seems like maybe Definitely. too many people have access to this information. So that's why it's being sold on the black market, right? Definitely. Uh, you know, I, I think it actually, if you're an account manager, you're not really maybe supposed to know all of those things, uh, even though, yeah, maybe it would make sense. But the thing is, you're working internally in, in that company and you probably know somebody who knows somebody so you know then for for the money you know <laughs> people can do a lot of things and uh there's different ways of getting information so I, I i really don't know but i mean the thing that i told about amazon pulling out is just my idea because i see how i see i see what's happening you know in the, in this part of the world i mean i've seen before how how things happen and then how amazon reacts and then and then these and that i'm just i'm not saying it is because of that but right, i'm just right. saying it, it yeah. might be it's I think it's an interesting point of view, actually. Um, then, uh, sorry, you asked me something before, like uh, another question that I don't remember right now, like what kind of black hat is going on right now? Or uh... Well, I guess the most common black hat that you see, I know there's so many different types of black hat. There's like, you know, rank manipulation, there's mm -hmm. you know, hijacking other people's listings. Um, I've seen the most recent one is uh, people reviving dead ASINs from, the graveyard that has no sales for a long time, but have a whole bunch of reviews and then they'll oh, yeah. merge their ASIN and then resell that That's product. A yeah, a lot of customers that monitor the reviews. And then after a while they message us and go like, Hey, this is not my product. Why am I getting notifications about it? And then we go in and we say, Hey, this is your old ASIN. Someone else has just changed all the information and now reselling it using your past reviews. So um, there's a lot of new stuff going on too that we've seen. So yeah. <laughs> I guess the question is, um, I don't know, what, what other stuff that you've seen recently that maybe sellers should be more aware of and how they can prevent? Um, okay, so, yeah, the, uh, the most recent one that I had, and it was literally a few hours ago, I was on the phone with this new, new client, and uh, he, was, he, he, he was a little bit alarmed. He told me, so a few days ago, I logged in into my account and I see a new, a new listing that I didn't create. And uh, I mean, somebody added a listing on his Seller Central inventory, only in Italy, I don't know why. <laughs> and, um, and then once he had all of his bullet points and title completely removed, I, I didn't hear about, uh, you know, very often, like why would somebody remove your, your titles? They would rather do like they do, you know, normally they would just hijack your listing and get the sales. Why would they just remove it? Right. So, yeah, and then uh, the one that you mentioned before is the zombie listing. So somebody would actually use a listing that is not being used, uh, that is not active for a while. And just because that listing has got some sales history, so, you know, that might, you know, affect positively the rank if it's relaunched. Uh, so they would use the, the reviews. But on the reviews, you see the original reviews from the, the very first product. So if the product doesn't make sense with the new one, then of course, you know, that something is, is wrong here. And it's happening so many times. But um, I still want to know, I still want to say to, you know, to the sellers who are listening to, to this, just don't lose your hope. It's, uh, it's not too bad. Amazon is definitely working for doing something. They are constantly, you know, chasing them. The only problem with the... Uh, 
with the Amazon, the way that Amazon does it is that they are, of course, slow because, you know, they are a huge company. There are so many black hat players out there. The, uh, the way of filling forms is, uh, is not super fast. Also because they want to avoid, you know, to, to get a lot of messages for nothing. So I would say try to get in touch with somebody who knows what they're doing with some agencies, you know, uh, I mean, I know a bunch of guys, but also do your job and try to stay away from the category and from the from the products that are very hot selling and uh, they are very easy to get attacked. So I think that these, because, you know, we say that preventing is always better than curing. So if you don't even surf into that particular, you know, uh, area where where you are exposed to a lot of attacker, attackers, then they would not attack you. And definitely, a good thing to do is to to register your brand uh, and to prevent that this would happen to you. And try to get a vendor central account that would definitely help you to 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 get your listing back if somebody you know attacks you, because at least you are at the same level. You know, if you if you right. just stay with with the seller central, then a vendor can come, can claim your, uh, you know, your, your listing, can change everything, can get your sales, and you can't do nothing about that. If you're a vendor, you can try to get it back uh, by yourself, even before Amazon, you know, realizes that. Um, I, but, got a, I got a question for you that just came up on my mind. I, I know, like, um, like, as of last year, a lot of uh, sellers, when they get their listings hijacked, um, they've instead of taking the approach to hire a law firm to, you know, do the proper way to get the cease and desist and everything, what they end up doing is uh, getting a bunch of their friends to buy, buy out the inventory of the, uh, the hijacker. And then they would file like A to Z claims, which kind of triggers a, uh, a policy violation on that, that account and then get them kicked off. I mean, is that something, is that considered black hat in terms of a defensive way? Uh, would you recommend doing that? Or is that something that, you know, we should still like contact Amazon and do it the proper way. Of course you should contact Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it depends on many things. Um, I would say this, if you have a good lawyer and if you, if you are able to keep a good track of your action, then this is not, you know, illegal. This is not black hat. You're just protecting yourself. You're just doing something that is completely under the light of the sun you're asking your friends to buy your product. You're just giving evidence to what has been done. And uh, if somebody has been attacking you, it's not you doing, you know, hurting somebody. Definitely involve Amazon so they know what's going on. But uh, you can also do that. Um, I knew in a different way. Uh, I think this, this was another friend of mine who was doing this. Like buying a lot of products and giving a lot of negative reviews and a lot of negative feedback until that listing eventually will, will be shut down by Amazon. So it's like, if I cannot make the money, you can make the money and then let's see who, who gets it back. And of course, you as the original seller, you're getting it back because Amazon will give it back to you. Um, so this is another way. But I think that that way to buy the product, I mean, I've seen it also uh, and showing that it's actually different is the best way. Another way you can do it is actually you put your brand name not uh, on the external part of the packaging, but you yeah. put it on the internal part where in the parts where actually the, uh, the sides uh, stick together. So when you're opening the packaging, you know, you, you're unpacking it, then it's inside. There is your logo. Of course, a, a seller who wants to copy your, your packaging, they don't know that the, that the brand name is there. So you can use this as, you know, a, further uh, evidence that that's not your product gotcha gotcha yeah that's some really good advice there that's awesome um yeah i guess uh those are some good topics uh what, what would you suggest about like product launches these days because i know there's a lot of uh, questions going around about you know should they do giveaways should they not do giveaways because it's kind of risky at the same time right because a lot i mean the, the whole point is to do the sales velocity but at the same time, it seems like Amazon is also tracking the product reviews. And if they detect a normal amount of product reviews coming in or unverified reviews, then, you know, their async gets shut down in a way. Um, so I don't know. What's, what's your suggestion for, like, you know, let's say I wanted to launch a brand new product. Uh, what's, the, what's the best white hat way to, let's say, get it up there? Yeah. So, okay, uh, this is actually the hottest topic right now because, you know, I've seen a lot of, 
trends uh, going on in Facebook group, WeChat groups about getting suspended because you're actually launching a product and you're doing nothing wrong. Right. It happens with giveaways. It happens with deals. It happens with reviews, with, with, with sales. So the thing is this, you're launching a product and uh, you got your feature on you know, the, uh, the Good Morning channel or whatever and you're so happy because you're getting a lot of exposure or you get your deal with this very good influencer and you're going to do a giveaway or you want to launch your, your product on a deal website. There's a lot of deal providers out there you can use them and sometimes it gets suspended this is so frustrating because you want to do everything correctly and white hat but then you're classified as somebody who's, who's breaking the rules exactly. so this is happening this is happening because amazon is changing the algorithm of course even though still is not that bad i i i read somewhere i think it was a comment of a guy that yeah, of course, it's, it's related to the velocity of whatever it is. Like, it's not about how much sales you're doing, but it's how, how long or short it would take you to do that sale. So if you do like 100 sales in one day or two days or in a few hours, that's going to trigger the algorithm. So exactly. be careful. Right. And, yeah, and not how many reviews you get, but how quick you get those reviews. So Amazon knows that you, you still can get, you know, the extra exposure in a TV program or in a deal website and you could have a peak, you know, that, is, that doesn't make sense. But if that peak come, keeps coming, then they know that something is wrong. Um, especially if you're not a big brand, especially if you don't have that sales history because it's over the times right now that a brand new seller can come and can behave like a big seller all of a sudden that's not going to happen anymore Amazon is not going to allow this anymore they, are, they, are change, they have changed already the algorithm so my suggestion is this use everything that you can and grow steadily uh, this is actually what I what I help my clients with uh, use a lot of PPC in the correct way I mean you should have a curve that goes like this you shouldn't have you know this kind of this kind of heart heartbeat right. things you know um, use you can use your friends to get reviews. It's okay, everybody does it, but still, don't ask 100 of them or don't buy fake reviews. You know, you can you can have your, I think it's 20, 21 reviews before starting your PPC or not. I, I suggest you can also start your PPC before you get the reviews. I mean, a lot of sellers, they are, they're the one of the main issue for a PPC is this, like when should I start my PPC before or after getting the reviews? And I'm a big advocate of, using the PPC even before sometimes you get the reviews on a low budget just you know to do some testing to to get to do some research etc uh, right. optimize optimize your listings uh, you can use giveaways but don't don't do too much and actually you know the thing is you can never be 100% sure uh, if if you're breaking the rule or not uh, especially if you don't have access to the A9 and if you don't want to be involved with this kind of things. Uh, but, you you know, just try. I think I think that it, it would all come with, with experience and, uh, you know, trying different combinations. A lot of people actually are using now super URLs. I mean, this has been going on for a while. Uh, <clears throat> but... Um, and I see people still using the same super URL from like four years ago. And uh, I don't really know if that, if that works. If people here don't know what super URL is, it's, it's, a kind, it's a URL that you can actually implement and use to pretty much force the algorithm of Amazon to think that something is happening. Like, for example, you're associating your ASIN with some particular keywords or you're associating your ASIN to an Alexa search or frequently both together, et cetera. Um, this is a kind of gray area here. Yeah. Um, just, just be careful. I, I mean, I am always suggesting, try not to do black hat, just try right. to do the good way. And, uh, I guess you know. it depends on your risk appetite, what you're willing to, yeah. uh, to uh, put in, right? Because like, like you said in the article in BuzzFeed that you know, some of these sellers have no choice because the competition yeah. is so fierce, right? So by the time they can get any sales, they might as well just do some black hat to, you know, get a little bit of advantage. But of course, if Amazon flags them, they get their account suspended and then, you know, everything ends. So, yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's also on, on the, on the flip side, uh, some sellers have no reason, but appeal to the black hat providers to actually 
kick out a hijacker or to remove a bunch of negative reviews. I mean, I've seen a lot of my clients who are asking me, hey, I got, you know, for example, I take over the PPC, but they have this one star review that is hurting, you know, the rank and the PPC is hurting the ACOS. They know that they could have like, you know, 15% ACOS, but with, for this one star review, we have the entire account with 20%, you know, something like that. So they asked me, hey, do you know somebody who can actually remove this review? And I mean, I don't do that, but I know somebody. And this is, this is also what I mean on the other side. Uh, yeah. They're kind of, you know, they have no choice because you know that that review is fake. But Amazon is not doing anything for that. So this is, this is what's going on. And uh, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, see, I see that a lot. And I actually know a few people that use the service to get rid of a negative review. And um, I can tell you, uh, one of them got, got hit pretty hard. They actually got all their reviews, uh, reviews taken away because, um, you know, Amazon's not done. They're a software company. We're, we're a software company. We log everything that happens uh, in any page. So any service that tells you, hey, we can delete the negative review from existence, no one will ever know and have no trace about it. That's a big lie because everything is logged. And if they ever want to look up any information, uh, they would be able to find that someone deleted it. So um, yeah. it does come back and hurt. If they do find out, it will hurt you. So yeah. like you said, um, using Black Hat to defend yourself might not, could actually um, hurt you too. So it's yeah. kind of, be careful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely be careful. I mean, I, I never suggest anybody at, in any case, in any circumstances to do Black Hat. Yeah. Uh, I just say that a lot of guys are using it. And you know, Actually, from what I've seen, using Black Hat to defend yourself, I, I haven't really seen a lot of bad things happening for that, but it could happen, so just be careful. Uh, one more thing that I saw, I was reading a conversation on, on a WeChat group. There was a guy saying, hey, we got this review, and it's a negative review, and, but we want to downvote it until pretty much it goes, it goes you know, yeah, back in the way. You can't see anymore. Yeah, it goes right. away. And he said, we put 200 votes, but then the competitor, he went back and he put 300 up votes. <laughs> and then they ask is it a war and yes it's a war it's uh unfortunately it's like this because the way that i see it is that amazon right now is the biggest online marketplace in the west of course you can't even compare it to to, the, to, to china that they're, they're huge and everybody wants to jump in and this is this is the thing i mean i have addressed this uh this issue in uh, in my most recent article uh, it's called war is on how to beat unfair competition that maybe you can link down then later and um uh i'm i'm saying this you know in the us market you got a lot of players but in china you got only the chinese players pretty much pretty much i mean it's not as easy for us to attack the chinese market as it's for them to actually be in the american or european market. and uh yeah this is this is what's going on um i uh, it's it's very interesting to see to see how these things are evolving. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, we live in fun times right now, and you know, Amazon is one of the biggest things in the last, you know, five ten years that's uh, changing. You know, our society and the way that we do uh, business and shopping, and you know, any any time you have some kind of uh, you know platform or growth, there's going to be people that want to come in, and monetize, and make money and there's just going to be, you know, these kind of just human nature events that happen. Um, yeah. So yeah, hopefully in the future, um, things will become a little bit more, let's say like level the playing field for everyone to make it more fair. Um, that way, you know, as a consumer, like I want to go on Amazon, I want to buy a quality product, not a product that got a bunch of fake reviews. I moved to the top and then in the end I realized this product is junk. Right. So yeah, um, I think it's good. But for everyone, hopefully, yeah, Amazon does does a little bit more, does more action to help protect some of these, uh, you know. Definitely. Uh, you, you said something very right. I mean, the, the very last interview that I received regarding Black Hat, uh, mm -hmm. it was even after Leticia interviewed me. The, mm -hmm. I, I had a talk with, uh, with Danny McMillan from Seller Session, and uh, he was asking us, um, what is going on on this side of the world and what is changing as of, you know, April 2019. And I told him, actually, even that the consumer is changing. You know, before you could have, 
a consumer who scrolls his phone, doesn't even look at the reviews or sees some positive review, but doesn't really go deeply into the content. And now because those things are happening and because more people are exposing those facts, this is why I'm helping you know, everybody to expose what's going on about Black Hat. The consumer is starting to be more selective and more, uh, you know, starting to protect himself by actually digging into the reviews and looking. I mean, if you if you see a review on a power bank for you know for for a hair trimmer, then you know that something is wrong. You're not going to buy this product. If you see if you see that those reviews for that product are too close to each other, like you got like 10 reviews in a day. I mean, this, is, this doesn't make any sense, you know? So don't buy that product. It's probably a fake review. If you said there's something wrong with the English content of that review, it's probably not written by an English person. <laughs> so, you know, you, you can educate yourself and learn how to, how to have a better selection on Amazon and do not waste your money because it's, it's all about money at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. And and that's that's a really good point because that's the same thing we preach to our sellers too about monitoring the reviews because these days uh, like you search when you when you search for a power bank, you're going to get one page that has 15 listings. They all have four and a half stars. They all have 3 400 500 reviews. Like how do you actually go in and distinguish which one's good and which one's not, right? Cuz uh, yeah. probability says one out of those 10 products is probably fake, right? So they'll go in and yeah. read the negative reviews more than they read the positive. So yeah. it's almost like yeah. the positive reviews don't have as much weight versus the negative reviews. Uh, if they read them and they can see that there's fundamentally a problem with the product, it's actually like for me, when I shop on Amazon, that's the first thing I read is the negative reviews to find out there's actually a yeah. major problem with the product. If it's fake or is it just people just not having a good experience just for, you know, some people just like complain and write negative reviews. And to me, that doesn't... Yeah hinder me from buying it but um yeah like you said that you know we as consumers are getting smarter too by you know figuring out not everything that you read or see is always real so um. yeah and you know you, you also have to consider this thing that we all know i mean you are most likely leaving a review when you're not satisfied with that product i mean 1000 people buy your product and 999 are happy that one person is not happy is going to leave the review Definitely, right. because exactly. there's something pushing this guy to, you know, alarm the other people, but the other people didn't have any issues. So then you might have this one review when everybody is, where everybody else is happy. And also one thing that happened to me, for example, this, this one client, this is uh, another reason happening. We were boosting his sales because we, we provide a lot of services, you know, to make your rank higher. Of course, all in a white hat way, like doing more PPC, doing uh, giveaways in the right way, doing Facebook launches, etc. And uh, we got in the middle a four star review. And it was like, oh my God, we got a four star review. We we're hoping to get only five stars review. And actually, I said, you should be happy because that four star review is very well done. There's a long text. It's saying that your product is perfect but that right. the price is a little bit higher, you know, right. and even made a video. So that guy was saying that the product was really good, but the price was too high to compare to, you know, to the big brands. I said, this is a really good review for you because it's saying that the only bad thing with you is the price. So you can always change the price, you know, it's, uh, exactly. so it's, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the bad reviews can be turned into good reviews, especially if you leave a like we tell sellers to always leave a comment on the review uh, a way for the buyer to reach out to you if, in case you read it. But more importantly, the comment is actually more for the sellers or for the buyers that come and research your product. They see that, hey, as a, as a manufacturer brand, you're actually being very proactive with customer service. So if you give us, a, uh, if you respond to the negative review right away, it shows that, hey, um, if something happens when I buy it, I'll, uh, you'll, you'll take care of me, right? So it, yeah. it's, there's definitely value um, doing that, so. Um, yeah, anyways, um, this has been a really good, uh, conversation and, uh, thank you so much for Thanks your you. insight. Um, yeah, check out David. Uh, he's, uh, from a website called wearegrowthhack.com. Uh, they help Amazon sellers, uh, you know, basically grow your brand, do, uh, PPC, all that good stuff. And they do everything in a white hat fashion. So you don't have to worry about um, <laughs> violating any of the rules. So yeah. uh, thank you so much, David, today for Thanks. having you on. And uh, pleasure. My pleasure. To, uh, talking to you again. Have a good guy. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And for more information, please visit feedbackwiz.com.